David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a recent limited edition release from Enso, and that would be the latest in their Italia line, made from a Jonathan Brooks Primary Manipulation Number no. 4 resin. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, uh, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, there are a few differences between this Italia model and previous iterations, so I'll show those differences as well. Uh, thanks again go out to the good folks at the California-based Enso for providing this pen for review. The pen arrives in this box. There is a little magnetic closure here in the front which flips open and inside we have a pen. This is the Inso Italia in Primary Manipulation 4. Um, of all the iterations of this Jonathan Brooks material, uh, PM4 is my favorite. Um, the colors are bold and bright and mixed a bit more with uh, than some of the other PM numbers. Uh, during the size comparisons, I'll show you how this looks compared to PM1, uh, and I have a few other PM4 pens as well. But compared to the PM1, PM4 is a bit more blended, it feels a bit more softer and warmer. The transitions between the colors are less harsh, uh, and it flows well. Uh, and I also like the color palette a little bit better as well. With resins of this nature, every pen will be unique, but PM4 has a rainbow of colors. Uh, the ones I have tend to be heavy on purple and blue, but there's plenty of orange and yellow, uh, as well as red. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cap. It comes to a rounded point. Uh, this transitions into the clip um, it is a fairly thin clip and has a sloping design. Uh, the raised end helps it accommodate materials of varying thicknesses. Uh, the barrel angles up uh, for almost its entire length. Um, this is where you'll see the biggest difference between this pen and previous Italia models. On the metal versions of the Italia, there's a Greek key band here, uh, but that's absent from this model. I'm not sure if I've seen an engraved band like that on a resin pen. Um, I'm not certain if an engraved design would look good or not in this material. Um, I guess it would depend on the quality of the engraving. Um, it might have been a wise decision to exclude it, but my curiosity wants to at least see what it would look like. Uh, there is a small step down in, from the transition to the cap to the barrel. Uh, this is where the, another difference of the versions is. Um, it's hard to show in pictures, but there was a small step down from the barrel to the section, which was visible in the metal versions. Uh, that is not present here on this particular pen. The barrel tapers down at a fairly even rate of decline until you reach the end. Uh, the metal version had an engraved ring near the end, which again is absent from this model. And at the very end, like the top of the cap, it comes to a rounded point. Uh, the cap twists off with one and a quarter rotations, and underneath we have a very nice surprise. It is a number six, 14 karat gold nib engraved with the Enso name. Uh, this pen is only available in fine. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, the section is a different design from the metal version as well. The metal version starts off with a Greek key design and then angles up at an even rate of incline. Uh, this resin version has the same shape and incline, but the band is absent. Then at the end of the section, you have the cap threads and a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Uh, even though this section has a straight incline without a swale or raised portion at the end, um, I can maintain a solid grip on this resin. I don't find my grip traveling down the section at all. Uh, it's comfortable in the hand, and while this isn't the longest pen, uh, it's plenty long enough to use unposted. Uh, the cap does post, and it does post securely. Uh, it's light enough that I don't find it backweights the pen or throws off the balance. Um, also, I don't find the edge of the cap to be sharp against the inside of my hand if it should rub up against it. Uh, that's one of my pet peeves, uh, with, when something is sharp against my hand like that. 
So it's nice that that isn't the case with this pen. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Uh, with this barrel being a solid piece of resin and no internal metal parts, this pen would work well as an eyedropper. At the end of this section, it has an O-ring to help maintain a good seal. If you should choose to eyedropper this pen, I would still apply a little silicone grease to the threads. The Enso Italia Primary Manipulation 4 is only available through the Enso website. I will put a link to it in the notes below. Uh, this is a limited edition of 80 pens and retails for $295. With this pen having a gold nib, I find that price to be exceedingly reasonable. Uh, nowadays, it's tough to find a modern pen with a gold nib for under $300. Oh, and if you use the code uh, ITALIAPM4 at checkout, you can receive an additional 15% off, which takes it about $45 off the price, bringing it down to around $250, which is even more reasonable. Uh, these limited edition Enso pens tends to sell out fairly quickly, so if it's something you are potentially interested in, I would suggest checking out the company site sooner rather than later before they are gone for good. Um, I recently experienced that myself at the soccer game. Uh, Wrexham is playing Chelsea here in North Carolina, and I thought it would be fun to go to the match. Uh, I forgot what day the tickets went on sale. I really wasn't paying attention, and when I remembered a couple of days late, the game was already completely sold out. Uh, and tickets were way too expensive on the secondary market. So uh, I guess I might be out of luck. Uh, well, we'll see what the secondary market looks like closer to uh, the day of the game. Maybe uh, tickets will go down in price a bit. Um, I very much enjoyed watching the uh, Welcome to Wrexham TV series and thought it would be uh, neat to see a game in person of theirs, since I don't make it over to Wales too often. Okay, um, regarding this pen, while I wish it was available in a few more nib sizes, um, I understand with smaller limited edition runs like this that sometimes it's simpler to just offer one single nib choice. But as you will see in the writing sample, uh, this fine nib performs quite well. Uh, thanks again, go out to Enso for providing this pen for review. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Enso Italia Primary Manipulation 4. I uh, wanted to give you another close-up look at this resin. I just think it's amazing. I just really love how the colors pop on here. Um, in regard to a couple of other pens with primary manipulation, uh, this was another one with PM4. This was an Enso and this was the Piuma. Uh, and then this is a Collier Grande, again with PM4. And you can see how even though they are uh, the same PM4, that they have a bit of a different look to them. But then in comparison, this is a Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, and this is PM1. And you can see here in the comparisons how the colors are a little less blended and a little more stark. Uh, now, I like both looks, but of the, uh, of the two, I'm really big fan of PM4. But that's what it looks like in comparison. Then in regard to a couple of other pens, uh, this is what it looks like with one of the original Italia models in metal. Then here's another pen from Enso, which is a brand new pen that I'll be reviewing here in the near future, which is a Minimalista pen. And this one is in Ultim. And then finally, here it is with a Lamy Safari. Now, I wanted to actually show you again some of the comparisons between the, the newer and older models that I was talking about. You can see here that there is a band here and there's no band here. Again, I'm curious to see what it would look like. Who knows? It might not look that good with the engraving. Uh, it has an engraving down here, which is missing. And then the other difference was here on the section. Again, there was the engraving. Uh, and not there. Again, it might have been a good decision to leave that off, but I was just curious to see what it would potentially look like. 
Here we go with the writing sample for the Enso. And this is the Italia. And this is PM4. This is a fine 14 karat gold nib. And the ink that I'm using is one that I think is underrated, which is Cross Violet. This is what the ink looks like. It's just a nice saturated purple. This is what it looks like with one of my other favorite purples, the Pilot of Roshizuku Murasaki Shikabu. And here it is with another one of my favorites, which is the Mont Blanc Beetles Psychedelic Purple. This is what the cross ink bottles look like. A nice big top. I kind of like the lion on there. Uh, plenty long of a neck. And uh, you can get just about any uh, nib in here, which is nice. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I believe Enso uses Bach nibs um, that I find this to have a bit of feedback to it. I wouldn't categorize it as uh, glossy smooth. Um, you can get a little bit of line variation out of here. In, in the ink flow for a fine, I'd say it's on like the medium to low side. Uh, and in regard to reverse writing, It is a little bit sharp and scratchy, but in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up very well. So there we have the Inso Italia PM4. Um, I'm, I'm really a big fan of the material. Uh, I think this is a nice size pen. Uh, and to be able to get a, a 14 karat gold nib for the price of this pen, especially with the discount I mentioned earlier, uh, the price is reasonable as well. So it's well worth checking out. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.